This week, I got my hands on this. This is the Geekom A6 Mini PC. This was sent to me by Geekom for the purpose of review, so thank you to them for that. And just so you know, they didn't get any editorial input on this review. They're seeing this right now for the first time, same as you. This is a pretty great little device, actually. It has a Ryzen 7 6800H CPU. It's got a Radeon 680M GPU. It has ample memory and impressive connectivity, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. This review is gonna go into the unboxing, the features of the device, and more. It's also going to show you the little secret that this thing has up its sleeve, so stay tuned for that. Now, at the heart of the A6 lies the aforementioned Ryzen 7 6800H processor. This CPU has 8 cores and 16 threads with a maximum frequency reaching up to 4.7 GHz. The clock speed, especially for gaming applications, is also great. It's excellent for code compilation, for rendering videos, and in a pinch you can even run simulations with it. The CPU is paired with the Radeon 680M GPU, bringing capable graphics to the table. This integrated GPU delivers appreciable performance at 1080p. The Geekom A6 is equipped with 32GB of DDR5 dual-channel memory, operating at speeds up to 5600 megatransfers a second. And complementing the robust RAM setup is a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD. Now, unboxing the device was a breeze, and for a device in this price range, around 450 bucks, I wasn't expecting like the most extravagant unboxing experience, but I was impressed by what came in the box. You get the A6 itself, but also a vase mount, a manual that actually provides useful information, as well as multiple cables, including HDMI. The rear I.O. doesn't skimp here either. We've got a standard 19 volt barrel jack, two USB type C ports, two type A ports, one is 3.2 Gen 2 and the other is 2.0. Then there are two HDMI ports and a 2.5 gigabit network interface. One thing that I wanna point out is I'm actually very pleased with the labeling of these ports as most of the time on a lot of other systems, you don't get uh, useful labels. <laughs> like it's like USB or display port, but here the type C ports have a speed rating and a display port logo indicating the possibility of video out on these ports. On the left facing side of the device, we have an SD card slot. And on the front, we have two USB 3.2 ports, a headphone jack, and the power button. For connectivity, the device supports Wi Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Now, I said this device had a little secret. So let's go into the unboxing footage for more detail on that. So, what do we got in here? We have a one terabyte NVMe SSD here. This is a M2. 2280. That looks like like a, maybe a 2242 or a 2260. So this is probably a 2242. I'm gonna guess. Don't know for sure though. Uh, but there's other unpopulated uh, stuff here. There's a header here, and that is labeled USB 2. I don't know if you can see that on the camera up there, but I'll take a picture of it. USB 2. See that? And then over here, this one says. USB 3 underscore 2. So this one doesn't really look like a USB 3 header because I only see four pins there, unless these are counting as something, but I really doubt that because this one has it too. So I'm gonna guess that these are both USB 2 and this is just number two or number three, I don't know. And then this one right here is actually, if you can see, SATA. That's pretty neat. So this is one of the more expandable mini PCs that I've seen. It's got headers for USB and it's got SATA and another M.2. Now out of the box, the A6 comes with a Windows 11 Pro install. If that's your style, great. With Windows, you can easily use this device for home or office work or coding or development or indie or double or triple A games. But let's be honest, Windows isn't the greatest couch gaming experience, and with a device like this, that's what I want to use it for. Windows will suffice if you have to make it work, but nobody should have to be subjected to that. Hey, it's my channel. This is where Linux really shines on this device. Now, to boot into Linux, uh, it wasn't quite as straightforward as I expected it to be. Now, obviously, you need the prerequisites of having a USB flash drive with your chosen distro etched onto it. And while you see the Geekom logo, I'm used to tapping F9, F11, F10 sometimes. And I tried F9, F10, F11. None of those seemed to work, so I had to Google it. 
Uh, and it, apparently you have to hit F7 to open up the boot menu here. If your chosen distro doesn't sign for secure boot, then you actually need to hit delete at the Geekom logo to enter the BIOS. And then you have to disable secure boot that way. But now I have uh, Nobara installed on here. So let's benchmark this against Windows and other handhelds. My experience testing titles like Doom Eternal and Shadow of, of the Tomb Raider amounted to what you would kind of expect, right? The A6 was able to outperform the Steam Deck with uh, higher resolutions, and I'm actually quite pleased with that result. Then God of War was uh, lackluster, to say the least. If you've seen my channel before, then you'll know that I have this pretty awesome uh, retro gaming setup here that I play a lot of games on. This setup includes the Sony Trinitron uh, Wega CRT. It's actually HD and it has like an HDMI port on the back, like it's version 1.0 or something. But this TV is so old that the highest progressive scan resolution that this TV supports is 720p. But I think that's pretty neat because when you pair the Geekom A6 to this TV and you play at 720p, this actually is quite performant. So here are some comparisons, and I'm just gonna let these run so you can actually see for yourself the kind of performance you can expect. On the left, you're gonna see Nobara Linux, and on the right, you're going to see Windows. But you know what? Indie games is where my heart truly lies. And for 2D platformers, for puzzle games and that kind of thing, the Geekom A6 barely breaks a sweat. So yeah, that's my review of the Geekom A6 mini PC. I think for its price, it's uh, competitive. There are a few pitfalls here and there, especially because it comes with Windows on it. I'd rather have a, a Linux device out of the box. But yeah, it's pretty impressive, especially for the for the stress tests that I like to put these devices through. Now, I really enjoyed trying this out, and I want to thank Geekcom again for sending this over to me. As with all my reviews, they got no preview of this video before or any input on the script before it went live. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts on this device. Uh, have you tried it for yourself? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Uh, you'll find links below to pick one up for yourself. But you know what? I think that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.